Hey, what is up everybody? This is Alex. I have not uploaded YouTube in a while, but hi. Um, I have been messing around with some music production stuff. Um, I've never really gotten into properly recording music. All the guitar covers I've ever done are just straight through Audacity with uh, D D DI through an amplifier. So, um, and it's obviously a Line 6, so it's not anything that's more than practice worthy. It sounds better than to just using a camera mic straight, you know, playing your amp like you normally would. But it's not necessarily something you would use in a studio recording. So what I've got over here is, um, right now I am recording um, in Reaper, which is a, a direct, it, it's an audio workstation. Um, it's the cheapest one out there, I think, but it's also one of the most functional ones that you can probably use. Um, it pretty much has the same kind of stuff that Pro Tools does. Um, and then I also have the Bias Effects um, plugin. Um, this is the professional edition. It's um, pretty great, actually. Um, I've been messing around with it, and I just wanted to show you guys what it would be like for a noob in Bias Effects, um, how to make guitar tones. That's pretty much what I'm trying to do. Um, so right now I've got my Strat here. Um, if you can see right here, it's got a, um, a Deactivator X pickup. That's a DiMarzio pickup. Um, it sounds really good um, through my amp, but I'm trying to figure out. Um, all my guitars are they sound totally different. Um, my seven string back there is a um, it's an Ibanez. It has a default. I think it's like IB4 pickups or something in it. Um, and obviously, totally different wood. This is a basswood guitar. Um, and that one back there, I believe, I believe is a, I think it's maple. I don't remember, but, um, it, it, essentially every guitar I have sounds completely different. Um, which means that the tones that in, are, that are in this program are going to work different with every guitar. Um, like I, this patch that I have right here, which is a, it's just a generic noise gate, uh, with a, another generic boost pedal to a um, Ibanez OD808 that they um, modeled, and it sounds pretty accurate, at least from what I know of. I haven't used any professional equipment outside of the stuff I've seen at Guitar Center, so it's not like I know how to configure these things extremely well. So from the perspective of someone that just wants to go, hey, I want to record music with guitar, and I've got like a free drum program or something, and I just want to write down my music ideas, right? Um, this is something that would definitely help out when it comes to actually shaping your sound and trying to figure out, like, what kind of guitar player am I, or how do I actually, you know, do I sound any different when I record in the studio? Would I, you know, is there is there any real difference between whether when I'm just jamming or when I'm actually writing music? Like, does it come out differently? And I think it does for pretty much every person, so... Um, so yeah, uh, we got the Ibanez OD808. It's a classic pedal. They use them with 5150s to get that classic, like, metal tone. So, um, and then after that, there was, there was a phaser. I don't know why that's there. I'm going to remove that. But see, see how easy this is? It's a, it's a, it's a plug-in that functions like an amp chain. You can just add and remove things as much as you want. Um, I had a delay here at one point, And then, so, so I, I was going off of this preset called USA Metal. And it sounds okay, not with my guitars, though. I feel like you'd need something way classier to get um, a good tone out of just a default preset. You kind of have to fool around to make it match whatever your guitar sounds like. But right now, this is what um, I've got going on. So everything's at 50 here. Um, the boost, I've just got a lot of the stuff up the middle. The gain's a little far down because this Laney 50 is a... Um, I'm pretty... Oh, it's not a Laney. It's probably what it is. It's just renamed. Um... So I, I've got the gain down actually on a lot of these, so you can kind of get good. So um, you get a decent tone curve that way, and you're not muddying up your sound a lot. Sounds pretty good, right? But it obviously can sound better, and that's what this video is for. So um, I'm not going to experiment for too long. I don't want to like hold you guys up or anything, but I wanted to see what you can actually do with this plugin to make things sound completely different. So right now I'm recording in Reaper and I can still tweak this plugin. I can also have the input monitor, if you can kind of see that over here, that monitor input box is checked in Reaper. Um, you just have to arm it for recording and um, press control R to start recording the actual track. Um, as soon as you have monitor input on, I don't even have studio monitors yet. I'm still working on that. 
I just have my computer speakers plugged directly into my audio interface, which is, you know, a box you can get for 80 bucks or something. It'll, it'll allow you to plug your guitar in um, and record through your computer. That's what I've been using for years, actually, and it's been really reliable. So, uh, yeah, plug that up to your audio interface and uh, just have everything, every single preference, even your um, actually default Windows computer speakers, you can still put them through, um, through your audio interface, which is kind of great. So I just have them plugged in there all the time. Um, until you get monitors. When you get monitors, you can just switch your speakers back to your directly to your computer. Um, obviously, there's a lot more explanation I could go into doing this, but there are tons of videos out there and great resources that already have a lot of this stuff documented. So if you ever want to look into it, um, I think Fluff has some good videos. Um, Misha has some good videos from Periphery. Um, I think those channels are just called... I don't remember. Pretty sure Fluff is just called Fluff at this point. Um, or it's Ryan Bruce. Um, and then Misha is Misha Mansour, M-A-N-S-O-O-R. So yeah, check those out if you ever want to learn more about um, recording. Maybe I'll do one at some point and offer some stuff on questions that no one's really answered yet, but they've got some pretty comprehensive stuff out there on the internet that you guys can check out. Um, so yeah, so uh, pretty much, yeah, like I said, there's low gain here. Um, drive is up to the mids here because that's that's when I want start stuff to kind of get kick in a little bit because I'm obviously looking for more of a metal tone here and even though this is a strap because it's a HSS you've got that deactivator and it's a high output pickup but it's passive which allows for me to swap to the neck pickup and get some good like even with like a crazy even with um like a very like ballsy tone you can still get like like little bluesy likes in there if you want to do something weird like that or just something that's not as menacing right um and uh yeah so the the amp is is low gain with everything turned a little bit past five i kind of i've always liked it that way on, on my line six so i just kind of tried that configuration here and i managed to get something pretty good out of it um and then reverb you've got um this was default settings i think um for the usa metal uh preset so um, it's mixed pretty far down, but it gives you a nice... I've never used reverb, actually, in any of my practice rigs whatsoever. So, um, this is the first time I can finally actually mess with one that sounds relatively good. Um, the only time I ever used reverb on my amp that was built in was when I was just doing clean stuff. Um, and I've always wanted it for something like a rhythm tone or whatever. So, I actually, I've heard reverb is is kind of disciplined against in rhythm tones but i don't know i like it so far we'll see um and then obviously that noise gate is you can kind of tell there's some you can tell there's a little bit of like feedback um when when the tone is actually active yeah you hear that well it's not there anymore but maybe you did hear it um so the noise gate is completely muting um, that extra noise whenever I've got this guitar. It's not being played. Um, but I'm trying to aim for something that doesn't have any noise while I'm playing, and that's the problem with the suppress. Um, this, this, For example, this uh, noise gate, I could really go into a lot of crap. I'm pretty much just experimenting and wanted to kind of take a video of it just to see how I even act when it comes to trying to narrate what I'm even doing. Um, so there's mute, which is what I've got right now. Reduction, so you can, now you can hear that feedback a little, right? You turn it up a bit. It's a little bit of buzz, not all that much. And that could even just be my computer speakers, I'm not sure. Um, if you can't tell by now, this guitar is in drop D, which is kind of cool. I have been playing, um, actually tons of weird tunings lately, and I've just kind of come back to having something that's actually in standard. I like a lot of half-step down stuff, and this is a little bit different for me, and, um, here's a little snippet of the next cover I'm working on. <laughs> Thank you.
Let's try it again. what it is um but i mean you can see so as i'm playing as i'm even just recording this entire this track i can mess with stuff like so right now i've got the game pretty low right i can just play that open d chord crank the gain up a little maybe you how much beefier that sounds right because i think the laney is a um because I think the Laney is a tube amp, um, it gets more aggressive the higher you actually turn either the volume or the gain up. And, and now you can kind of hear that feedback going on. So I was turning the gain down to where, you know, you can just barely hear it. Um, and the, the goal was to get the po to the point where this noise gate, its threshold is... So now I can turn the gain up to 11 because it's muting and it won't matter. Right. Pretty cool, right? <laughs> Get some pretty weird, like... See, that, that's actually... This amp sounds really good with the gain cranked up, right? pretty fun to mess around with like I could just spend literally hours there there's billions of combinations of, of crap you can do in this program and that's just with the professional version um, if say I wanted to replace this amp with something different right um, you just double click on it, it brings up this menu um, and right now I'm actually on a I think it's a crunch amp yeah um, so there are amps that are higher gain than that like these guys and you can obviously get even more um, by getting artist packs, which I think is what they're called. Um, it's like a little extra, and you can get Jeff Loomis, Keith Marrow. That's a 5153. I don't know what that sounds like, but I've heard it's really cool. And um, But I know that Ola England and uh, Keith Marrow support some of this stuff. So um, there's even more like acoustic stuff you can mess with. And there's even bass stuff, at least basic bass stuff. <laughs> All right, so... Um, it's pretty cool. You can just, it's plug and play. You can drop anything you want into it. And I've had a lot of fun with it so far. So that's what I've been up to for the past, um, I think, two months since I recorded that uh, Darkest Hour playthrough, which was still on Audacity. So that's what I'm working on. I'm trying to find a tone that'll work for a guitar cover. That way I don't even have to use my amp for that kind of stuff because that amp kind of sucks for anything that is not practice. So, yeah. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you want to see more, let me know. If uh, you want to chill out and literally do nothing on YouTube, let me know. Because that's what I've been doing. Alright, see you guys later.